Uh, hello everyone, welcome to the information seminar of Bachelor of Arts in Interactive Media. So today we are talking about what is interactive media and how it could be related to design. First of all, people might think about it is related to mobile, mobile phone or mobile app. And of course, uh, many uh, students' work will be about in, uh, mobile apps. But on the other hand, we might consider what we call mobile is not just the application, it's not just the mobile phone, but also the location of mobile phone and how it connect to the server, so that the mobile phone could reveal the position of the user. So if this idea is widely applied in some location-based game or location-based apps. And interestingly, uh, some of you might find that it's very much related or similar to uh, something that we have seen in some animation. Uh, for example, so a Japanese uh, anime, uh, Dragon Ball, features a ha handheld uh, waiter something like a handheld waiter uh, more than two decades ago. And this you might find extremely similar to uh, some location-based applications and games. You may also wonder, or uh, maybe interactive media is about virtual reality and augmented reality. Typically, of course, it's about this kind of uh, uh, cumbersome uh, equipment, headman displays, and all the control. But again, uh, we, as designer, we might think about some more exceptional application of AR or VR. This is an example that I came across uh, years ago uh, in a museum in Denmark. Uh, it shows us something like a telescope. And when we look through the telescope, we definitely, we could see some exhibits on the staircase. But when you really look through it and also turn the lob uh, next to the telescope, it will zoom in to the exhibits uh, on the staircase. And gradually it will turn to some virtual reality, transfer from physical reality to virtual items, virtual representation, uh, showing a human being in the early days, maybe hundred thousands of years ago, uh, looking through the sky. Then, uh, some people may also think about, ah, oh, it is related to something very popular today, uh, Internet of Things. All these equipment uh, today are, are connected, interconnected. They talk to each other, and also they detect the changes in the environment related to the user. And this is very much cutting edge ported we could find in the market. And as designer, we might also think about the application for humans' well-being. For example, this idea, connect ashtray to the digital picture frame, such that when the user pick up the ashtray, it would detect that probably the user is going to smoke and gradually the digital picture frame will become dusty and dirty because the smokes probably create some indoor pollution. Of course, this is virtual, but the idea is a, like a reminder such that the user might be aware that, ah, oh, maybe they probably smoke too much. So they put down the ashtray back to the box, back to the container, and the digital picture will gradually become cleaned out, washed out uh, by the virtual wings. So again, of course, this is also because there's a data 
transmitted from the smart ashtray to the digital picture frame. So some of you might also think that uh, interactive media is about in interface design. But what is interface? We are not just talking about interface on the web or interface of, of app or digital games. But actually, it can be interface of many other things. Everyday things. For example, uh, in the uh, elevator, we definitely, this is uh, two typical examples of uh, 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 elevators, the, the, the control panel. This is also a kind of interface. But why I put up these two examples, because I want to show that there are some subtle differences here. Not only because of number fours, not only because of the color, but it is about the arrangement of the button. If you look at the left hand side, the four button arranged in a way that according to the levels of the corresponding four. So lower force button at the lower part of the panel and higher four at the higher uh, 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 position of the button of the panel. So you could see that uh, 4, 12, 13, and 14 at the top, and ground four, first four, second four at the bottom. But when you look at the right hand side, your right hand side, the four, the four buttons are arranged vertically so that some higher four are like uh, 16, four, 17, four, or 29, 28, four, they are located at the bottom of the panel. So this is not natural because uh, usually we expect 20 something fours or 30 something fours to be at the top part of the panel. But if you really want to look for 27, then you will find that 27 at the very, very low position, extremely low end in the control panel. So uh, you might say, ah, this uh, probably uh, very, very subtle, low people would notice it. But users, uh, they, when they actually come to the elevator and look for a four, Imagine he might be a guest or she might be a visitor. Uh, the first time they use the uh, elevator uh, like this. This is a very typical scene, right? In Hong Kong, over 50 fours. It's very difficult for a guest to look for the corresponding force. For example, where is 415? Looking for the button for 415 is very difficult, extremely difficult. So as designer, we pay attention to all these meticulous details such that we want to design some usable, user-friendly uh, 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 interface for our users. Of course, uh, 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 Lately, we have some uh, interesting, innovative idea of how to redesign the whole elevator system. So the interface now is not only inside the elevator, but actually in the lift lobby. Any visitors just key in the force they want to go, and then the system will tell the user which elevator uh, he or she should go to, for example, this one, 420, then go to uh, elevator C. Very intelligent, right? Uh, this is what we call smart system. But um, something that uh, you might say, new technology enable new interactions and also new experience, right? But one thing that I, I would need to recall is, or remind you is, there are some shortcomings in this kind of system. Even though it looks very smart, but the problem is, it is not flexible. Imagine if you go to elevator C, and then suddenly you find that 
oh, sorry, I actually want to go to 4.11 first before going to 4.20. It doesn't allow you to change. You have to go all the way back to the lift lobby and we key the 4.11 and then wait for another lift again. So you cannot change your destination inside the elevator. So this is not flexible. So there's always some upsides or downsides of any kind of system design. All this going to some kind of uh, new interactions that might have new experience. And new experience can be many meaningful, can be pleasurable, but also it might have some shortcomings. And designers uh, need to consider all this all these different possibilities. So, here comes the future. If you join interactive media, this, all these uh, popular job openings uh, you could find today on the internet, like user experience, so-called UX designers, UI designers, digital visual interface designer, interaction designer, game designer, you name it. There's a, a lot of uh, related job openings in this area. And this is some examples of our alumni in, in the past few years, uh, after graduation, where they go, where they join different uh, uh, enterprise or different startup companies or some uh, uh, um, uh, a major finance or digital marketing area. So, our interactive media program is a two-year top-up program. We welcome all associate degree holder or higher diploma degree holder um, in different areas, not only in design, but something related to interaction design, including information technology, business communication, creative media, and even a data science. In the future, of course, uh, you could look for further studies. In our school, we already have some related Master of Design and also Master of Science in, in Multimedia Technology waiting for you after graduation. So, after all this, of course, uh, today what I really want to tell you, uh, including this, this information, like what to design. This, these are some just brief examples of our students, uh, graduate, our graduate, what they saw in any show. For example, this one is a system that connect those people on wheelchairs and those people who like, like to run in the city. Uh, running is a kind of sport in the city. And the runners, when they run in the, uh, uh, in the city, they, their smart shoes actually record all the data in the streets, and this data will become useful for the wheelchair persons, such that they know whether there are staircase or there are uh, a very narrow alley in the city, so they, they know, what to, uh, they know uh, uh, the accessibility to them as a wheelchair person. This, of course, uh, uh, this uh, the, a very brief cur uh, curriculum showing that uh, when you join us, these two years, what would you want, what you would do? It includes some studio subjects and also some electives. And actually, what you need to do is including user research analysis of the current market, some design on uh, uh, interactive media like the uh, web interface, of course. But in addition to that, they will also create digital intangible prototypes uh, and physical prototypes and dealing with some electronic uh, media. So say electronics and programming would be also covered in the course. And most importantly, presentation and demo, demonstration, is a major activity uh, for our students. 
So our students uh, need to present and demo for, for every semester for their major studio project. And tutor and sometimes uh, external guests will come to comments, critique or review their work. Different semesters may focus on different media. So for example, second semester, they work more on installations interactive installations. Other than that, we also organize overseas study trip every year. Of course, um, this year because of the uh, pandemic, we might not able to make it, but we believe that we will resume it next year. And these are the are some Examples in past years, we, bring, we brought students uh, to Japan and so that they learn about some uh, uh, thing that related to the countryside. They actually do field research and also experience different culture. And all this actually related to interactive media, even though you see it might not involve so-called high-end technologies, but so-called innovation is to how to apply technologies in our everyday life. So understand everyday life is very important. We also have exchange program. These two universities, one is North Carolina State University in the US and also Simon Fraser University in Canada. We have exchange program with them. And finally, uh, you might wonder what you need to prepare for the interviews or admission exercise. So here I just uh, quickly summarize the attributes we are looking for, including your design insight and also your empathy towards people so that you can design for people. Of course, aesthetic sense, technical skills is definitely necessary attributes. On the other hand, you have to collaborate with others and communicate with others. And when to apply? This is the deadline, 8th of February, and definitely low extension, so please make your application well before the deadline. And after you submit your application. The next thing you will need to prepare is the demo video. So the submission deadline of the demo video will be about mid of March. And then we will arrange individual, individual interviews around May March to early April. What to prepare? Of course, a few more words about demo video submission. You only need to prepare a two minute demo video to show a new idea. It can be a website, application, game, product, service, installation, but it, is, it should be your original idea and it should be focused on how user or people experience it and what benefits design will bring to them. And you only need to focus on one idea and make it compelling and convincing in this two minute video. And in this video, of course, because you are designing for people, we can see, we can see your empathy, we can see your design insights, aesthetic skills, and technical skill as well. An individual interview will we, we'll look further into your design insight and communication skill. So this is about that. Uh, this is what I prepared today. Uh, I hope you uh, have an idea of what interactive media is about and what we are looking for. And in the meantime, of course, now what uh, most exciting today is uh, we have an alarm like coming back to our school today uh, to share 
his experience and his excitement with you over all these years. So um, what next to me is our alumni, Hibis Lau. So now I pass the stage to Hibis. So Hibis, thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, so um, yeah, thank you, Kenny, for inviting me. And I'm Hibis. And before we start, let's do something a little bit interactive, because we are interactive media, right? Um, anyone in the floor is from non-design background? Please let me know in the chat box or share your professions, what you're studying right now in the chat box. Yeah, cool. I see someone is from non-design background. Yeah, this one is good for you because I am from non-design background too before I am getting into the interactive media bachelor degree. So who am I? Um, I'm Hibis, and I am um, I graduated from BAIM, which is the soft form of this course from 2014, and uh, I have a six-year ex working experience in design and technology industry, and also I'm uh, currently an MDEF student in SD also. Uh, I was uh, in engineering profession for my high diploma. So what you seeing here is uh, on the left the ones look not looking so good is the, my demo poster from my, for my higher diploma. And on, on the other side is the demo poster I recently did for my MDAS program. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm from non-design background, I don't know everything. So can I survive from this course? Definitely no problem. Can you, they will get you through it, give you well training for that. So uh, a little bit more about me is uh, I graduated from a high diploma in Poly U also from uh, HDEIE, which is an engineering profession. Then I go into a BAIM from SD. After that, after my graduation, I go into um, JCDC is a um, department in SD also. Then I work in the industry as a UX designer and technologist for in the middle. Then I come back to school again. So I have uh, quite a long year in, uh, in Poly U and uh, four years more than in uh, School of Design. So you may wonder why I changed my course from engineering to design. The main reason is because like, um, after my study uh, in uh, engineering, I find some, something is that technology alone is not enough for bringing good services for, for people or bringing good product for people. We have to work together with design, with liberal arts, with, um, with design. So when they come together, that will maximize both, power, both side powers. So let's talk something more, uh, a little bit interesting more. Um, how's life in BAIM? It's tough, especially for me as a non-design background coming into a design course. But it's a fruitful one. So um, SD and BAIM allows you to interact with different disciplines. As Kenny mentioned, um, this, should, uh, this is a class photo we, we, we take in our early, early start of the Oscar that time. What we are having here is uh, we have programmer here from programming backgrounds, we have from stage design, we have from product design, we have from visual design. We have some come back to study after a few years of work experience. So you have, uh, you have empowered you to have uh, experience to work with different disciplines within your course. So as Kenny mentioned, BAIM is intaking different um, professional, um, professional discipline for your high diploma or associate degree. So this is a quite in it's an interesting experience for me. SD allows you to stay in the building forever and for everything. Why I say that? So you will be having your two year time in a very outstanding, beautiful um, building. We are located in Poly U from Sahahadi. And uh, also what I say forever here is, in this, side, this building, you have all the facilities you need for your design projects. From printing output, from um, electronic workshop, from your laser cut workshop, 
Photo Studio, you name it, whatever, it's all encrypted inside this building. So you, for any project, the building can help you. I am allowed you to learn with different professionals and real users. What you're seeing right now is uh, one some of my old photos for my um, uh, client project during my, 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 my day uh, with Puma. So uh, we did a, a, a co-op co project with Puma together. Another one is uh, from with the government about the South District, uh, some um, uh, sports. So we have this some project for real user. And what you're seeing here is that during the summertime, School of Design often will have some uh, workshop with uh, different professionals, like some uh, infield designers, some real users. What you're seeing here is a, is a co-design workshop working with uh, product designers and some um, elderly. We design together to design some products to cater some uh, um, problems we, are, we, are, we, are, we define by that time. I am also encourage you to redesign your everyday life. What is saying that I believe everyone nowadays have used Google Map, right? But do you ever think is Google Map really doing a good job for you? Um, during the course time, we have a task is about redesign your last mile to your destination. By that time, we are think that typically the, map, uh, the navigation application will guide you, oh, go straight 400 meters along the Latham Road. But actually for you, it's not that meaningful. What would be better if we tell you, turn left on the 7-Eleven and go straight to the, to the cinema. I think for that, it's more contextual for the user to, to find the way rather than just looking at the map and has up turn around to look for the road, roadside. And also, as Kenny mentioned, I am also encourage you to go beyond just app. It's not just about doing an application. We have to do some uh, electronic um, installation, which is this, uh, the concept is a router. We change the lights based on your activities and time. And also we design games, not just digital game, but we also design board game. So what did I did after, I, I share something about what I did in BAIM, but what did I did after BAIM? Of course, um, I worked on Kafin UI. We're doing user interface for website, for application, design the structure, info, uh, visual architecture. I worked up with a cross disciplinary team. I also have experience in a startup to work together with um, like some professional scientists, like to transfer, transfer their knowledge to some end user, to name it. So how to bring those Excel data be meaningful to a real user. Also, I have redesigned experience for mass audience. So I have uh, worked in uh, some uh, local TV broadcaster on redesigning their uh, digital platforms. I believe um, some of you guys may use that before. And also, I have uh, experience in designing service with tight integration with technology. That's what I mentioned, why the reason I changed course. So like this is a um, system, like work together with a smart kiosk about this, um, selling drinks with your own bottles and how the system behind work with the back end, work with the workers, work with the beverage providers. And also with your learning, you can have some experience on doing some good for yourself. Like I have redesigned new workflow for planning my own wedding. And bonus says uh, I can share yes, uh, my wife is also my BAIM classmate too. So that may be something you can get from the course too. So um, tips for your application. So Candy shares, you need to prepare two minutes demo video and you may have interviews. I have just few things to share with you. You can see if it's helpful. The first one, make it simple. Um, no need to be a very complex, very um, gigantic ideas. 
reveal your daily life, find something, is, uh, find, some, find out the pain point that you're very, very good enough. Also, be yourself. No need to like uh, catch around, see others, how online others is doing. Just be yourself. Being yourself, be confident is also very important. And last but not least is rehearse it and show it to your dad and mom. Why is that? Is if your dad and mom know your ideas, and definitely your, the tutors, your audience can get your idea very precisely. So that's my experience or suggestion for you for preparing your application. Um, yep, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Hibis. <laughs> he definitely is uh, one of the uh, smartest students, uh, graduates in, uh, from our program. Uh, now he came back to us, uh, uh, studying with us uh, in his uh, Master of Design in Interaction Design. So you could see that um, quite many SD students uh, would go to work, gaining working experience and then back to school, further study, uh, further develop their intellectual and conceptual ability and then going to the industry again. So, uh, so now we could see uh, whether we have some questions. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, we uh, received quite a, some questions uh, from the four, from the uh, chat room. So the first question is, um, how, many, how many people can get into the course each year? Uh, okay, so and then also how many people applied last year and um, uh, Every year um, our co cohort size is around 30 to 33 uh, And last year we have uh, near 200 applicants so uh, It's uh, quite a competitive uh, process, uh, but uh, You just perform yourself and uh, we will find the right match. And the second question is, uh, can we submit a video from the previous assignment to be the demo video? Oh uh, yes, of course. Um, as long as the assignment is originally from you, uh, in case of uh, group assignments, I, I believe uh, quite many of you would have group projects. In case of group assignments, uh, you just tell us in the video, particularly in the uh, end credits or even in the caption, clearly tell us which part is from you, what is your contribution. Uh, so we know that how to assess your attributes uh, in the video. Okay, and then uh, can we apply using some pictures instead of uh, a demo video? Uh, at the end, it has to be a video. So, of course, uh, you could uh, use uh, images or pictures. Uh, you, you might call it photo mock-up, and then uh, you might want to add some motion graphics or simple animation to tell us the user journey, user scenarios. Because uh, why we need video? Because uh, in interactive media and interaction design, uh, the design is not just a static image. It's always a story because we talk about user experience and also user journey. As a journey, it is like a story of the user in their everyday life. So uh, you have to use the video to tell us a story. Of course, you could use uh, still pictures but try to make the still pictures uh, 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 some, with some movement and narration or, 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 or stories, make it telling a story, okay? And then uh, we have another one. Another question is, uh, will this course also have the chance to have a project grouped with other design subject students? Oh yes, of course. Um, uh, Hebe said that you definitely has 
opportunities to interact with other design students, other design disciplines. Uh, for example, so we have elective. You, ha you could choose two electives in your uh, two years. And uh, the electives is not only IM students. You could take electives, say, from portal design, from environment and interior design. So you definitely have chance to interact with other design students. And then, uh, does the reference letter help for the uh, application? Oh, yes. Um, if we could uh, receive uh, some reference letter, definitely it is useful. It will be useful. Do we need to submit the portfolio or just show it during the interview? Uh, yes, uh, you don't need to submit it. Yes, but you bring it along with you during the interview. Uh, of course, uh, we would assume it, it, it would be some digital portfolio, uh, either web page or PDF, in case you have some tangible artifacts. You can take a video of it, uh, or you could show, show it uh, in during the interview, no matter online interview or face-to-face uh, -face interview, you could also show your physical prototypes as well. Okay, uh, and then another question is, uh, is the video to introduce myself? Oh no, not, definitely not introduce yourself. Your, the demo video is introduce an idea, an original idea from you. Uh, so the idea, of course, will be presented as a design, uh, as a prototype, or as a user story. So your design might not be an actual, functional, working prototype. But try to use your imagination and your communication skills to tell your design idea in the video as a story, make it convincing and compelling. Okay. Then we have uh, a question in Cantonese. So I read it here uh, in English. Is he asked about how to prepare the portfolio? Yes, of course. Uh, the uh, portfolio, I think, uh, is quite universal. that we expect. Uh, you prioritize your most impressive work first because you don't have much time to present your portfolio. So you definitely want to present the most impressive one uh, first uh, and then followed by some uh, other secondary priority work as well. The most impressive work should demonstrate your edge and your strengths in design. Okay, and then uh, the Cantonese questions still have some other questions. So can you roll it back a little bit? Uh, yeah. So um, what about the coding skill, coding, programming? Yes, uh, every year people, uh, students, uh, applicants wonder uh, whether coding and programming is important. Uh, of course, uh, Hibis might add to it later, but uh, I would say uh, many of our students, they don't have any programming ex experience before coming to us, but they would need to um, have a first-hand experience, uh, learn the basic. They don't need to be a programmer. Definitely, you will not be, a, you will not be trained as a, pro as a programmer, but you know the programming basics so that you are able to communicate with engineers in future. Um, uh, Maybe I can yeah. add a bit on this. So uh, about coding skills, uh, yes, as Kenny mentioned, it's not a requirement, because at least we are from a school of design, we are not from school of uh, engineering or, or computer science. But if you have a programming skill set, I can one thing can share with you is, you will be definitely one of the hottest group mate, your customer expecting from certain uh, course. So as uh, we are required to develop some prototype, um, so coding skills, 
you must have you must have experience on coding during your two year course. So having a coding skill definitely will be a good one. Or if you have a, from a programming background or computer science background, you can definitely bring in a new perspective to the class and to the to to the class also because because design thinking is of course we have we think as a designer we have design thinking that kind of stuff but as an engineer they also have their concern and their um, training on, on how to digesting a problem. With, uh, with this um, interaction with two professional disciplines, I think it's uh, what we are expecting for the course interactive media. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. It is exactly. Uh, remember, uh, learning from peers is very important. So uh, in addition to lear learning from the class, uh, you actually learn from your classmates as well. So uh, if you are good at visual design, uh, your classmate may learn visual design from you. Or on, and on the other hand, you might learn programming from another student uh, who is good at IT. We never know, right? Mm -hmm. So learn from each other. Uh, okay. Uh, someone asked, uh, uh, how about the GPA? Is it important for admission? Yes, of course, uh, GPA is important. Uh, we, uh, uh, the School of Design and PolyU actually has a, a minimum requirement for GPA. So uh, 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 we would take consideration, take into consideration the GPA uh, in parallel to the interviews and portfolio. Uh, they all they are all important, um, and then okay because time is really tight, so we are about to see the last question. So the last question is: Is learning UI UX design a must? Uh, the question is: uh, uh, This student uh, just want to study game design. Uh, I think. Um, UI UX definitely is, is a uh, required necessary foundational component uh, of interactive media and interaction design, same as game design. But uh, I want this uh, student and also others uh, to have a, uh, a more open-minded vision, more open-minded thinking. Uh, actually, UI UX design overlap with game design because uh, UX, user experience also including play experience. So uh, when you design a game, you, you have to consider the experience of your players, of the gamer. Right? On the other hand, uh, sometimes when we design UX, we very much like design game, or we have something called gamification. We turn a uh, everyday acti activity into like a game. So in that means sometimes uh, we would incorporate some ideas in game, some principles in game, in UX design as well. So they are very much interact with each other. Uh, they are not two separate entities. So uh, take this uh, uh, perspective, try to look at things in different angles and open your mind, that is very important. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think uh, we are very much here now. And uh, thank you so much for all your participation, joining our presentation today, uh, and also uh, all the questions uh, you raised uh, definitely is uh, 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 very insightful and also useful for other applicants. So we hope uh, we will see you very soon. So thank you, Hibis, and uh, also thank you for our colleagues uh, supporting uh, this wonderful um, uh, information seminar stage for us. Thank you. Thank so you. see you. Bye-bye.